गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस पार्टिकल नेचर ऑफ रेडिएशन वी डिस्कस्ड इन द लास्ट सेशन दैट वेव नेचर ऑफ रेडिएशन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस पार्टिकल नेचर ऑफ रेडिएशन नाउ इन दिस मेनली थ्री टॉपिक्स वील बी कवरिंग फर्स्ट वट डू वी मीन बाय ब्लैक बॉडी रेडिएशन देन वट इज फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट एंड वन मोर थ्यूरी इज देयर प्लैंक्स क्वांटम थ्यूरी so these three things we are going to discuss in this session now first of all particle nature of electromagnetic radiation planck's quantum theory so planck's quantum theory explained the particle nature of electromagnetic radiations now first of all uh, there were few phenomena which were not explained by electromagnetic theory of radiations okay so in order to explain those phenomena max planck name of scientist max planck gave a theory which successfully explains those phenomena and that theory is called planck's quantum theory now what are those phenomena which were not explained by the electromagnetic theory of radiations first is nature of emission of radiation from hot bodies now see Uh, in simple wording we will say phenomena of black body radiation was not explained by em theory electromagnetic theory similarly second photoelectric effect was not explained by electromagnetic theory of radiations third variation in the heat capacity of solids with temperature was not explained by electromagnetic theory of radiations and last line spectra of atoms okay or specially why we we get a large number of lines in the spectrum of hydrogen so why do we get that that was not explained by electromagnetic theory of radiation so max planck he was the first scientist who explained the phenomena of black body radiation now what do we mean by black body radiation first of all when solids are heated they emit radiation they emit radiation over a wide range of wavelengths suppose we take uh, an iron rod and we heat it in a furnace first of all it will become dull red and then with the passage of time it will become more and more red with the increase in temperature okay now when it is heated further the radiations emitted become white and then become blue as the temperature becomes very high okay now what we are observing here we are observing that with the passage of time or we can say with the increase in temperature with the increase in temperature we are able to see different colors different colors we are able to see now what do we mean by color we discussed earlier electromagnetic uh, electro uh, that uh, there was a series elect, uh, there uh, it was visible region infrared region uh, that was cosmic rays gamma rays so such reason that collectively that was termed as electromagnetic spectrum so electromagnetic spectrum means there is certain definite value of wavelength or frequency for a particular color of light just like for visible region it was from 400 nanometer to 750 nanometer so that was the range starting from Uh, this was from starting from violet to red okay it is vib gyor so we start from v and we end up at r in case of visible region and this uh, wavelength it varies from 400 nanometer to 750 nanometer so what is the idea from there that color color represents a particular wavelength wavelength or frequency one and same thing if wavelength value is higher then it means frequency value is lower both are inversely proportional to each other 
so till now what we are discussing or what we discussed we discussed that when we heat a particular solid then with the increase in temperature it starts emitting radiations of different colors or we can say it starts emitting different wavelengths okay now in terms of frequency it means that frequency of emitted radiations goes from lower frequency to higher frequency as the temperature increases okay so red color lies in the lower frequency region and other colors which we have discussed they lie in the higher frequency region now when we are talking about frequency then it is like this and when we will talk about wavelength then reverse will be true okay now what is black body the ideal body which emits and absorbs the radiations of all frequencies is called black body okay a particular object or a substance which can emit and absorb radiations of all frequencies is called black body and those radiations which are emitted by such body they are called black body radiations okay so this is what black body radiation is now this phenomena was explained by planks now first of all let us explain it little more how wavelength and intensity they are related how wavelength and intensity they are related intensity in normal language what we can uh, understand by intensity brightness if brightness is more then we will say intensity is more if if it is a dull then we will say intensity value is low okay now the exact frequency distribution of the emitted radiation that is intensity versus frequency curve of the radiation from a black body depends only on its temperature now see this is the graph here it is intensity and here it is wavelength now at any given temperature from this diagram we can see at any given temperature intensity of radiation now see the graph is like this it means it keeps on increasing first reaches the maximum value and then again it starts decreasing okay so uh, from the diagram what we can see at a given temperature intensity of radiation emitted increases or decreases increases with decrease of wavelength okay now see as wavelength value is very high then intensity value is low okay so it means what we can see that intensity increases with decrease of wavelength it reaches a maximum value at a given wavelength and then starts decreasing with further decrease of wavelength okay at a particular point whatever is the value if we increase the wavelength then intensity value will decrease okay so why this thing is observed this was not explained by wave theory electromagnetic theory of radiations okay this phenomena was not explained by electromagnetic theory of radiation now what planck told and how it is applicable planck gave three postulates of his theory this theory is known as planck's quantum theory now see in electromagnetic theory of radiation it was said that the energy is emitted by any source continuously but here what he said planck said that atoms and molecules could emit energy only in discrete quantities discrete quantities means it is not continuous in separate separate quantities it is released okay now how it is released it is released in the form of small packets or bundles of energy those small packets or bundles of energy are named as quanta or quantum and when we talk about light then that quanta or quantum becomes photon so light consists of small particles called photons this is the first point now second point the energy of 
फोटोन और क्विंटा और क्विंटम इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू फ्रीक्वेंसी वेन वी सी एनर्जी इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू फ्रीक्वेंसी नाउ वेन वी रिमूव दिस प्रोपोर्शनलिटी साइन देन ए कॉन्स्टेंट कम्स दैट कॉन्स्टेंट इज एच नाउ एच इज कॉल्ड प्लैंक्स कॉन्स्टेंट एच इज कॉल्ड प्लैंक्स कॉन्स्टेंट इट्स वैल्यू इज सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स टू सिक्स इंटू टेन रेज टू पावर माइनस थर्टी फोर दिस इज इन द पावर सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स टू सिक्स इंटू टेन रेज टू पावर माइनस थर्टी फोर जूल सेकेंड और वी कैन राइट यूनिट्स एज किलोग्राम मीटर स्क्वेयर पर सेकेंड ऑल्सो वी कैन राइट लाइक दिस ऑल्सो इट इज वन एंड सेम थिंग आइदर जूल सेकेंड और किलोग्राम मीटर स्क्वेयर पर सेकेंड ओके इट इज वन एंड सेम थिंग नाउ वेन वी वेन वी see any source emitting radiations then how much energy total energy was emitted by a source that how can we see by this relation e is equal to n h nu where n is equal to number of photons here n is number of photons means whatever equation we have written here in this we will be multiplying by n e equation nu is for one photon energy of one photon and if there are n number of photons then total energy emitted by a source will be equal to e is equal to n h nu so these are the three postulates of planck's quantum theory now second phenomena photoelectric effect now there was a scientist called h hertz okay he performed a very interesting experiment where electrons were ejected from certain metals when beam of light was passed or it it is made to fall on the surface so phenomena of ejection of electron from the surface of metal when light of suitable frequency strikes on it is called photoelectric effect okay so what different things were observed during this effect first point electrons are ejected from the metal surface as soon as the beam of light strikes the surface so it means when light will strike at once there will be ejection of electrons okay there is no gap between striking of light and emission of electron second point number of electrons ejected how many will be ejected that is dependent on intensity intensity means brightness of light so if intensity of light is more then more electrons will be emitted third point for each metal there is a characteristic minimum frequency nu not what we say it is nu not and it is called threshold frequency so electron can be ejected only if the light which is incident that has frequency more than threshold frequency okay if this is the case then only photoelectric effect occurs if it is equal to threshold frequency or it is less than threshold frequency then there will be no ejection of electron okay now here you can see the process of photoelectric effect now see here we have taken a metal surface and this is the incident light now when light strikes the surface there is emission of electrons now how many electrons have ejected or electrons have ejected or not that is to be checked with the help of detector so here we check how many electrons have detected so this is the phenomena of photoelectric effect that is the process of ejection of electron from the surface of metal when light of suitable frequency strikes on it okay this is called photoelectric effect so this phenomena was also explained by uh, max planck okay now see einstein was able to explain the photoelectric effect einstein explained it on the basis of planck's quantum theory okay planck's quantum theory was used by einstein to explain this now what all things he said shining a beam of light on to the metal surface can therefore be viewed as shooting a beam of particles 
the photons so it means what he said when we are uh, incidenting a light on the surface of metal it means we are throwing some photons okay on the surface of metal when a photon of sufficient energy strikes the strikes an electron in the atom of the metal it transfers its energy instantaneously to the electron during the collision and the electron is ejected without any time lag so what he said that at once when photon strikes with the electron it transfers whole of its energy to the electron and electron jumps out of the atom okay and that is called photo electron or ejected electron now greater the energy possessed by photon greater will be the transfer of energy to the electron now if there is more energy with the photon then more energy will be transferred to the electron and greater will be the kinetic energy of the ejected electron okay in other words kinetic energy is proportional to frequency of electromagnetic radiation so whichever radiation we are throwing what is the frequency on that kinetic energy of photoelectron depends okay now see one more thing we are talking about here ejection of electron now electron is bonded with the nucleus with some energy there is attractive force now we have to apply such a radiation which has the energy more than that binding energy now only then ejection of electron is possible okay so that minimum energy which must be there with the striking photons that is called work function or threshold energy so there are two terms one is work function and another is threshold energy so photoelectric effect is only possible when the striking photons have energy more than threshold energy or work function okay now if we see the law of conservation of energy then energy given must be equal to energy after the process so uh, how can we say it uh, it will be okay now see uh, in this equation there is some printing error it should be the energy provided is equal to h nu okay this is the incident energy it is it is equal to threshold energy h nu not plus half of m v square okay now m v square is this half of m v square m e v square m e is okay you can okay now see uh, here is some printing problem so this equation is like this h nu is equal to h nu not plus half m v square m we can write m e also because it uh, represents mass of electron okay and this is incident frequency this is threshold frequency so this much becomes incident energy and this becomes threshold energy or work function and this becomes kinetic energy of electron so total energy in the beginning h nu is equal to total energy after the process so it overcame work function or threshold energy and transferred energy as kinetic energy to the electron so the equation becomes h nu is equal to h nu not plus half m v square or we can say incident energy is equal to threshold energy plus kinetic energy of electron okay so this way it goes now now the last thing is dual behavior of electromagnetic radiation now see uh, whatever these two phenomena we have discussed on the basis of these two phenomena it was uh, asserted it was certain that the nature of electromagnetic radiations is particle nature now it was very difficult for the scientists to adjust to this thing 
but it took a long time and then they started believing that in a few cases electromagnetic radiations will show their particle nature and in few cases it will show their uh, wave character okay so few properties can be explained just like uh, the phenomena of interference or diffraction these phenomena can be explained if we take it as wave nature and similarly black body radiation and photoelectric effect these phenomena can be explained if we consider it as particle nature so what was the result the result was that light possesses both the behaviors both the properties particle like property and a wave like property okay so this was the dual behavior of electromagnetic radiations now let us solve two numericals first is calculate energy of 1 mole of photons of radiation whose frequency is 5 into 10 is power 14 hertz now see for 1 mole uh, for 1 photon or 1 mole of photon n value is 1 mole okay 1 mole and we will say like this e is equal to h nu now see h value is down to a 6.626 into 10 raised to power minus 34 joule second and new value is given 5 into 10 raised to power 14 per second so this much is the value of energy now this value is for one atom now we know that one mole of photon it, this is for one photon and now for one mole of photon we have to multiply with one mole one mole is 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 okay so when we multiply with this then we get the actual value for one mole of photons so energy value for one mole of photon is this or you can do like this also you know e is equal to n h nu so here n is equal to one mole and one mole is equal to avogadro number so you can write directly here avogadro number into h into nu so in the beginning itself you can do it okay now second question the threshold frequency nu naught now nu naught value is given of the metal is this much calculate the kinetic energy of an electron emitted when the radiation of frequency hits the metal so incident frequency value is given okay now see this is the relation which must be there in the previous slide so what is there h nu is equal to h nu naught plus half m v square so if we keep it on one side and we take this to the other side then this relation will come okay h will be common nu minus nu naught is equal to half m v square and half m v square is equal to kinetic energy okay so kinetic energy is equal to h into nu minus nu naught we have to calculate kinetic energy so this is the value of h this is h this is nu minus nu naught so when we want to subtract or add then these powers should be same okay so either we can make it 10 raised to power 14 or we can make it 10 raised to power 15 so after rearranging this we will get okay so this will be the value of kinetic energy okay now whatever we have discussed on the basis of that you have to solve these assignments okay thank you